Welcome to the Parsha Perspective. Each week, we will delve deep in a weekly Torah portion to find a practical and insightful way to enhance your daily life. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Rabbi Shalom Yimini, and each week we will look into the weekly Torah portion to find practical and insightful ways to enhance your daily life. This week's Parsha Perspective is in honor of Rebetzin Chaim Mashka, the wife of the Lubavitcher Rebbe. The Rebetzin's Yortzeit, the anniversary of her passing, is on the 22nd of Shvat, which is this upcoming Monday. Along with being the daughter of the previous Chabad Rebbe, she was a partner in any campaign or action the Rebbe undertook. In her merit, may we experience the ultimate redemption and the coming of Mashiach. This week's Parsha Perspective is also in honor of the birthdays of Yoram and Yael Cohen. May Hashem bless them and their family with much health, happiness, and success. This week's Parsha Perspective is in honor of Rafua Shalema, the complete and speedy recovery of Aravimita ben Shoshana, Shaul ben Brita, and Lior Gabai ben Michael. This week's Parsha Perspective is in honor of the memory of Leah Mitchell Basak of Yosef, Edward ben Ephraim, Shlomo ben Edward, and Yochmina Daniel ben Gedalia. May the souls be uplifted and may the memories be a blessing. This week's Torah portion is Parshas Yisrael for all of time. Our Parsha has the Aser Sadebris, the Ten Commandments, making it one of the most significant Torah portions. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, God Himself, came to the mountain and gave us the Ten Commandments and confirmed that we are His chosen nation. Just six weeks after leaving Egypt, the Jewish nation arrived at the foot of Har Sinai of Mount Sinai. Moshe Rabbeinu instructed them to purify themselves for three days in preparation for the giving of the Torah from Matan Torah. They could not approach or touch the mountain, for it is holy and pure, and only Moshe, Aaron, and a select few others were allowed to be on the mountain. On the morning of the third day, a shofar's piercing sound grew louder as smoke, thunder, and lightning covered the mountaintop. God descended upon Har Sinai as the terrified and frightened Jewish people gathered around its base. God then said the Aser Sadebris, the Ten Commandments, to the frightened and trembling Jewish people. So overwhelmed, they turned to Moshe and begged him to act as an intermediary, for God and His holy and divine words were more than they could physically handle. Moshe Rabbeinu agreed but responded to the Jewish people, Don't fear God, for He has shown you Himself so that you fear Him and not sin. However, a question comes to mind. The first Pasuk of chapter 20 of Perak Chaf prepares us for the Ten Commandments for the Aser Sadebris. The Pasuk begins, Elokim kol hadvarim ha'ila And God spoke all these words, saying. The term, the word lemor, is usually translated as saying, and it was an indicator to Moshe Rabbeinu that he's allowed to repeat what God is telling him to the rest of the nation. But here, it is God himself who is speaking to the Jewish people, why lemor? What does it add to the introduction of the Aser Sadebris, the Ten Commandments? Rashi, Rav Shlomo Yitzchaki, the leading Torah commentary, gives a very powerful answer. He quotes the Mechilta, a medrash written by the great and holy Rabbi Yishmael, that the word lemor, saying, indicates that God said the Ten Commandments in one utterance, meaning that God spoke once but said all of the Asasadibras, said all of the Ten Commandments simultaneously. Although humanly impossible, the Mechilta explains that even God's physical expression was an element of His divinity. As we sing and pray during the Lichadodi prayer on Friday nights, Shamor v'zachor b'dibur echad, observe and remember the Shabbos, two words in one. The Rambam, Rav Moshe ben Maimon, explains in the Guide to the Perplex, the Mor Nevuchim, that this is a one-time phenomenon where the limits of sound were expanded. God's holy and sacred words were actually understood and absorbed by the physical Jewish people. However, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rav Menachman Lushnerson, gives a deeper and more profound explanation. He answers that Lemur does not only mean that God said all the Ten Commandments in one utterance, but also that the Torah and mitzvahs are given anew each and every day. Every day, a new element of Torah is revealed to combat the challenges unique to our times. The words that God spoke at Har Sinai and Mount Sinai are still echoing and reverberating till this very day. Their sound continues to interfere with human nature, challenging us to develop and advance the relationship between Creator and creation. In the previous chapter, 
Rashi quotes the Mechilta again, that we must discover and learn the Torah anew each and every day as if we would have received it that morning. As if we were the ones who actually heard God's words and saw His voice proclaim that we are His nation. Because in fact, we are. The holy and divine soul within us stood united at Har Sinai, at Mount Sinai, and accepted the challenge set forth and placed by God. In a world filled with darkness, be the light. In our daily life, it is imperative that we stand firm as the integrity of our society continues to worsen and deteriorate. We must be strong as the people around us combat the very notion of God and His sovereignty over this universe. By studying the Torah and following the mitzvahs, we unlock the soul's memory of its intimacy with God and the physical path leading back to it. There is a powerful essay by Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs about the Torah. The Torah is God's law and teaching and is not a code written by a distant king to be imposed by force nor it is an esoteric mystery understood by only the scholarly elite. It is available and intelligible to all and everyone. God was to become the teacher, Israel his students, the Torah the text that bound them one to another. Have a great weekend and good Shabbos. Thank you for tuning in to The Parsha Perspective. Check out our website, theparshaperspective.com. Send thoughts and comments to theparshaperspective at gmail.com. Till next time, thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.